Let's talk about bronchodilators. Today, we're going to talk about the most common bronchodilators, which are short-acting beta-2 agonists, also called SABAs, and long-acting beta-2 agonists, also called LABAs. Let's break apart the word bronchodilators. Bronco means airway, and dilator means to stretch or enlarge an opening. So think bronchodilators dilate or open the airways. We know they dilate the airway, but how do they do this? When you take a bronchodilator, it causes relaxation of the smooth muscles found in the bronchies. This allows for better air exchange, causing the patient to breathe easier. Okay, let's look at the names of SABAs and LABAs. A lot of them have the suffix terol. For SABAs, we have albuterol, epinephrine, levalbuterol, and terbutaline. And for LABAs, we have salmeterol, arfermoterol, formoterol, and olodaterol. But the most commonly tested on names are arbuterol and salmeterol. So I would be familiar with these two. Now let's look at uses. Let's look at a chart because it's important to understand the different ways SABAs and LABAs are being used. Albuterol is best for quick relief of acute symptoms. So it's used to treat bronchospasm and asthma exacerbation. This is why albuterol is commonly called a rescue inhaler. As for salmeterol, it's better for long-term management. These are for our chronic conditions like COPD, chronic bronchitis, and prevention of bronchospasms. You can remember these by the memory trick. Albuterol is for acute asthma attacks. And salmeterol, think slow and steady, working for a long time. Okay, now for side effects. When thinking of side effects, you can think fight or flight because bronchodilators activate the sympathetic nervous system. So we will see an increased heart rate over 100 beats per minute, also called tachycardia. We will have increased in palpitations and increased in tremors. Sometimes you will hear the patient say they feel jittery. Increased in cardiac arrhythmias and an increased energy, which could lead to insomnia and anxiety. Inhaled bronchodilators can cause something called thrush. Thrush is a fungal infection of the mouth. You may hear it called oral candidiasis. Let's look at some patient education for SABAs specifically. You want to educate your patient to shake before administration. You also want to educate them to not exceed three doses of two to four puffs every 20 minutes. Now for patient education for LABAs. You want to educate on taking a bronchodilator and a corticosteroid together because they're often prescribed together. You can remember this by the memory trick. B comes before C in the alphabet. So, First, we have B for bronchodilators, which help to open the airways. Then you should wait at least five minutes. Then you can administer the C, which is corticosteroids, once the airways are open enough to allow it through. Now for some patient education for inhaled SABAs and LABAs. You want to educate your patient on ways to prevent thrush. You want to educate them to rinse their mouth with water after administration and to use a spacer for prevention of thrush and use with children to get the full dose of the medication inhaled. Now let's look at some of the most commonly tested on information for bronchodilators. Bronchodilators open the airways. Albuterol is used for acute symptoms like asthma exacerbation. Salmetrol is for long-term management. You also want to educate them to use a spacer to prevent thrush. That's all for bronchodilators. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Happy studying, future nurses!